Hey guys, welcome back to another doll customizing video. In today's video, I will be sharing with you how I created a pastel warrior. If you stayed till the end of my last video, you would have heard me say that my next doll was going to be a combination of two of my favorite themes. I've always loved anything pastel colored and I've been meaning to create a warrior type doll so I decided to combine the two into this one epic doll. I also want to quickly say thank you to all of you guys because we recently hit 2000 subscribers on this channel. I am so beyond thankful to all of you for watching my videos and commenting such nice things. I do really enjoy making these videos and recording the process of making these dolls so I'm really happy to see that you guys all enjoy them as well. If any of you guys watching are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe to join me on future customizing videos. Also, make sure to stay till the end to hear a little bit about what my next repaint video will be about. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. For this custom, I decided to start with a Claudine Wolf doll from the Monster High Haunted Getting Ghostly doll line. I got her from a doll lot and she was in need of a little TLC. I chose her because of her darker skin tone because I think it will look very nice against a pastel color scheme. This way, not only will her pastel clothing and armor stand out, but also her skin tone will be highlighted. The first thing I do is cut off all her hair as close to the scalp as possible with a sharp pair of scissors. The next thing I do is remove her factory face using 100% pure acetone and a few q-tips. I wasn't really sure on what color of hair to give her, but from what I had in my collection of doll hair, I thought that this light blue color would suit her very well. This hair is from dollyhair.com in the shade Mermaid. For some reason, I didn't record any of the process of me rerouting her head, but somewhere during that process, I did decide to give her some white hair, just to add a little bit of variation, and I had this white hair left over from an old reroute. This hair was also from dollyhair.com and is in the shade Snowflake. Moving on to her face up, these are the initial lines that I drew of her top eyeliner and the crease for her eyes. The next thing I do is fill in the whites of her eyes using my white Derwent watercolor pencil. Using the same dark brown that I used to draw in her top eyeliner, I draw in all of her top eyelashes. I don't know why this always takes me so long, I speed up the footage so quickly and yet it still is too long for me to talk over the whole portion. Maybe I should start answering random comment questions during this part. The next thing I do is use my pink pencil to draw in her waterline. It was kind of weird because I knew what idea I had in mind for this doll, but for some reason I got so stuck on her face that, as you can see by the change in background, it took me a while to finally decide on what I wanted to do. I think a lot of people have different colors come to mind when they think of pastel. It can either be one single color or a couple colors, so I finally decided on using baby pink, baby blue, light yellow, and lavender as a color scheme. With that sorted out, I decided to give her two different eye colors in order to have my four main colors on her face. I gave her pink lips, one blue eye, one purple eye, and I also used the yellow for her eyeshadow. I normally never do this, but I brought the yellow eyeshadow color down underneath her eye as well. Moving on to her eyebrows, I start off by using a light brown pencil to lightly sketch in her eyebrow shape. These eyebrows were probably the fastest eyebrows I have done, and they came out pretty even too. Another thing I never do is add freckles. I thought light freckles on this doll would be a nice touch, so I use a wet paintbrush and pick up some color off of a dark watercolor pencil to gently flick on some freckles. The main reason I use watercolor instead of acrylic is because acrylic tends to dry quicker and is harder to remove once it is placed. Ideally, I would have done the freckles before any of the face-up lines in order to prevent any of the paint from falling onto any areas I have already repainted. Since this was not the case, I try my best to cover up the eyes with a piece of paper. But since I did use watercolor for the freckles, I am able to easily lift off any freckles that I do not like with a wet paintbrush. After this, I spray another layer of MSC and begin going over all the colors again. I think most people have learned how I like to do the eyebrows, which is doing the main hair color for the beginning part of the eyebrows near the middle, then using whatever color I use for eyeliner for the ends of the eyebrows, creating an ombre effect. Then I add a highlight underneath the eyebrows. I thought I was done with this layer, so I used my Prolex powders to highlight the face. I used the scarlet color over the blushing on the forehead, cheeks, and nose. And for a little bit more dimension, I used the interference blue to add shine underneath the center part of her eyes. I have started to really enjoy drawing things on the face. The first time I drew something besides facial features on a doll was my clown girl. However, most recently I added scales to my sea monster doll and sprinkles to my sweet treats doll. For this doll, I decided to use hearts and stars. I carry these shapes over to my design for the armor later on. 
Another spray of MSC later and have gone over all of the colors again. This time I also added brown to the pupils and the outline of the iris. For the lips I added highlights and creases. Now I add some dark eyebrow hairs over the light blue to make them look less flat. At this point my watercolor pencils have taken me as far as they can go, so for some added highlights and deeper color saturation I turn to painting on the colors. I start off by using white to highlight underneath the eyebrow and to make the whites of her eyes brighter. Especially on a doll with darker skin it is harder to build up colors so this is a great technique to use so you don't have to keep spraying on layers and layers of MSC to build up colors with only the dry pencils. With the same white, I also give her an eye shine line. I gave her a star eye shine as well since I have already done heart shaped eye shines for my Animal Crossing Reese and Cyrus dolls and since she already has a heart on her nose. Off camera, I go over the other colors of her face with a wet paintbrush but this is pretty much her face complete besides the final step of adding highlights to her eyelashes to make her face really pop. When I was adding the highlights to her top and bottom eyelashes, I also decided to add some tiny white dots to the little design on the side of her face. This was a random touch, but this actually helped me out on figuring out armor colors later on. Once her face was all complete, I sprayed her with one final layer of Mr. Super Clear and let her dry for 30 minutes. Since I never showed her with her hair completely rerouted, this is how it turned out. I really like the light blue with her deeper skin tone, I think it helps fit the fantasy pastel warrior vibe. Moving on to her outfit, this is the initial concept sketch that I made for her. Usually I don't sketch out my vision for a doll because it normally changes a lot along the way, but for this doll I was really stuck on color placement because I wanted to make sure that all of the colors were represented evenly. So after quite a bit of thinking, I decided to actually sketch out what I had in mind and label the parts with colors and fabrics to really help me figure out what my vision was. Starting from the top, I wanted to give her a sword bag that would rest around her hips, I had a shimmery fabric in mind that I wanted to use for the sword bag as well as the cape. I was also deciding whether or not using gold or silver for this doll since she is wearing armor. I thought it would be appropriate and since the shimmery fabric was a little bit more on the goldish tone, I decided to go with gold. Since she was going to be getting a sword, I wanted to also give her a large shield. For her armor, I decided to give her some thigh pieces, leg pieces, an armband, and a chest piece. Underneath her armor, I wanted to give her a pink long sleeve and some lilac pants. For the bottom parts of her legs, I also wanted to give her some striped socks and I was going to keep her shoes simple by repainting a pair of Monster High boots. This was also when I decided to add some cutouts to the armor using the star and heart shapes that I mentioned earlier. I actually picked out these boots before I sketched out my ideas because I knew I wanted to give her some socks and these shoes were the perfect height to not be covered up by the leg armor pieces. Originally, I was going to use this chest piece as an example for me when I created her own chest piece out of foam, but in the end, I didn't even end up following the shape. I really wanted to use this headpiece because it fit her head perfectly since she still has her original ears. Moving on to her clothes, I used this pattern for her pants, which I think I made from a pair of Ever After High pants that I took apart. I cut out the pieces with this lilac fabric and sew them together following the instructions. Her socks are pretty simple, I cut out two rectangular pieces of white stretchy cotton fabric and then I sew them together to make two tubes. Here's a look at her pants and socks complete and being modeled on the doll. I close the pants with a clasp at the back and later on I will paint on some pastel stripes onto the socks. To make her long sleeve top, I use a back top pattern and a sleeve pattern that I have been using for most of my dolls. But for the front top part, I made a wrap top pattern so that it would kind of cross over half of her body. For some reason, when I was sketching out this doll, I envisioned a gold stripe around her top, so that's why I ended up giving her this wrap top. I cut out these pieces using light pink fabric. Sometimes my sleeves turn out a little bit longer on these dolls, so in order to make sure that that wasn't the case for this top, I decided to give her this little detail of a double fold on her sleeve. It's not really noticeable in the end, but I thought this would be interesting to show you guys because it is very easy to do. Here is her wrap top all complete. I'm sure some of you have seen these types of shirts before where you tie them in the inside of the shirt and then there is another tie visible on the outside. That was kind of what I had in mind for this doll. I'm sure I've seen this type of top in movies about warriors which is probably why I vision this type of top in my mind. For her cape, I deconstruct this Ever After High cape that belonged to an Ashlyn Ella doll. It is a short cape which I like because it won't cover up all of her armor and clothes. Here are the pattern pieces that I made. The next thing I do is cut out the pattern pieces using the shimmery fabric. I sewed the cape together and attached a lavender ribbon so that I can tie the cape closed in the front. Here she is with all of her basic clothes made and on her. 
After this, I move on to accessories and also painting on details left for her top and her socks. The paints I use for her shoes are white, lavender, gold, and tan. I use the tan as a base coat for the areas I will be applying gold to, the white I use for the heeled area of the shoes and the lace holes, and the lavender I will be using for her shoelaces. Here is one of her shoes complete. I had picked these shoes not only for their height but also because they were pink. Originally, I was going to leave them pink and still add the white glitter and colored laces, but then the pink color wasn't as pastel as the pink fabric I used for her top, so instead I decided to paint them gold. The second shoe I painted exactly the same, but I colored the laces blue. After making the eyes two different colors, I started making a lot of changes to the doll to make everything feel more asymmetrical, hence why the shoelaces are two different colors. I added glitter to the bases of the shoes by painting on a layer of Mod Podge onto the white area. Then I used white holographic glitter to pour onto the areas. I dust off the excess glitter and repeat this step for both shoes. To seal in the paint and glitter, I spray the shoes with MSC. A lot of my dolls come to life after I find some sort of item that inspires me. This little toothpick sword was what inspired me to want to make a warrior doll. I had been saving it because I wanted to make sure that I had an idea that I thought was cool enough for me to use the sword. The little handle on the sword is too big for the doll to get a grip on, so I cut it off. Then I paint the handle with the tan khaki color before going over it with gold. The sword bag was made by sewing together two rectangular pieces with a triangular shape at the end. After turning it right side out, I painted a heart at the end with a gold outline. I found this white and gold polka dot ribbon in my crafting supplies, so I use it as the sash that will go around her waist. Moving back to her socks, I use pieces of cardboard to stick into the socks so that when I paint them, they won't leave marks on the other side. I paint on stripes using my four pastel colors. Again, going back to the asymmetrical vibe, I didn't paint the socks identical. I paint on a gold border around her top just for a little bit more detail. In the end, it's not very noticeable, but this was a design feature that I had planned, so I just went with it. To really make sure that her headpiece would stand out, I decided for the main color of it to be gold and have the jewels be my four pastel colors. Again, I have to paint the headpiece tan before I get to paint it using my gold acrylic paint. This was kind of late at night and my camera ended up dying, so these are some pictures I took with my phone. Originally, the headpiece was only going to be gold with the four big pastel jewels on it, and then I was very unhappy with how undetailed it was compared to my other items. So I ended up painting on more pastel jewels and using white for the tiny little dots. One element that I didn't have in my original sketch was a bracelet on her left arm which would be holding her sword. I felt like that arm would need a little bit more protection since her other arm would be holding her shield, so I decided to repaint this bracelet. In order to attach her sword bag around her waist, I just added some velcro to the ribbon. And again, because I wanted to give her every accessory that I could, I decided to give her this little glass charm bottle purse around her waist. Last minute, I ended up changing the blue glitter to the Arteza Fairy Dust Holographic Glitter because the area around her waist ended up having a lot of blue around it, so the easiest solution to fix that was changing the color of the glitter in her bottle purse. Once all of her accessories have been repainted, I use my Liquitex High Gloss Varnish to make all of her accessories shine. I also use the varnish for her lips, waterline, and little pink nose. Since her hair wasn't going to be very noticeable from the front, I decided to keep it somewhat simple by adding two braids near the front of her face and connecting them in the back with a third braid. And with those three braids, I braided them together for one mega braid. I used a yellow ribbon to tie around it because I thought it would make her look a little bit more warrior-like. This is her hair all complete. I had to make sure that it would lay down on her head because of her headpiece that I would be putting on her later. Besides getting stuck on the face, I also got stuck on making the armor. I had trouble making armor look how I wanted it to. One day, I finally got the hang of it and the pieces came out really well. In the original concept, her chest piece armor had a curve to the top, but when I made the piece and tried it on top of her long sleeve, it didn't fit her well, so instead I opted for a more curved chest piece. In order to get a slight curve to the shield, I actually used my sister's little frozen toy. Who knew such a weird toy would give me the exact shape that I would want. For the armor pieces on her legs, in order to get a nice and even circle shape, I use my acrylic paint bottles to trace the shape onto the foam. Once the pieces are cut, I follow the method Doll Lightful shows in her doll armor tutorial, which is using a lighter to slightly heat up the foam and then press it onto the doll or another object to get the curve that you want. At this point, I hadn't done it, but the star and heart on her armor pieces I will cut out with an X-Acto knife. 
In order to connect the two thigh pieces together, I used these mini fasteners that I use for my steampunk doll that I bought at Joann Fabrics. Again, from the Doll Lightful Armor tutorial, I used puffy paint to give a slight raised edge onto all of the armor pieces. This video is getting pretty long, so I figured you didn't need to see me painting all of the armor pieces. The reason I made all of her clothes first was for me to check what colors I could use for her armor pieces because I wasn't too sure. I knew that I wanted the shield to be the four main colors, but I was debating on making all of the other armor pieces blue and yellow because her clothes were mostly pink and purple. I ended up going with my asymmetrical idea and made all of the pieces different colors, but I used the gold paint to paint onto the raised puffy paint areas and make everything feel more cohesive. Remember when I said that adding the little white dots to the side of her face helped me out when deciding armor colors? Well, this was why, because I was debating on using white to outline the armor pieces, but I thought that gold would look better and since I had white dots on her face, I would use white dots on her armor as well. Because I felt like being a little extra, I decided to use my resin and white glitter to add more 3D dimension to the armor pieces by adding some little white jewels on top of the white dots. I mixed my resin together with the same white glitter I used to paint onto the bases of her shoes. In the end, it's not really that noticeable, but it does add a little bit more glitter and detail to the armor, which I think was worth the effort. Something that I didn't really notice when using resin molds was that the resin wants to lay flat as quickly as possible. So after I placed each dot of resin, I had to cure it immediately so that it didn't pull out to the sides. If you follow me on Instagram and check out my stories, you would have seen that I figured out a solution to missing doll handles for doll stands. I made a mold of it, and now all I have to do is use resin to make my own. And since I had leftover resin from this project, I made one here. With all of the armor pieces completely repainted, the last thing I do is add some way of tying the pieces onto the doll. And as a simple precaution for me, I decide to add some fabric to the inside of the armor to make sure that any of the paint wouldn't rub off on the doll's clothing. Some of you were probably wondering whether or not I was actually going to cover up the holes in her armor pieces, and yes, of course I had to because if armor had holes in them, it would probably be pretty useless. And of course, to keep it all connected, I used the shimmery fabric that I used for her cape to fill in the holes. In order for the doll to actually hold the shield up, I used a small piece of wire to have her hold it. I connected the wire to the shield with some resin because I wasn't sure if hot glue might melt the fabric and foam. I used pink ribbon for attaching the armor pieces onto the doll. Her chest piece I thought would look cool attached to her as a corset, so that's why the strings look pretty wild on her armor piece. With all of her armor, accessories, and clothing complete, the last thing I have to do is dress her up and take some final photos. I literally say this about every single doll I make, but she is one of my favorites. I think the idea of combining pastel colors with a warrior type doll is pretty interesting, which is why I really like her. I myself am not a big wearer of pastel colors, but I really like it on her, and I do like her more fantasy-like design. I also like the options you have to display her. She can either be holding her sword or shield, or both, and you can take off her cape so that you can actually see the armor piece on her arm. The hood can be up or down so you can see her headpiece. This is kind of why I took a lot of photos of her with the different variations of poses so you could see all of her accessories. Here are some photos of her cape off so that you can actually see her long sleeve top. I definitely think using Claudine as a base was the right choice because I think a more paler doll wouldn't stand out as much using such light pastel colors. We just might have to revisit this idea again in the future. This is the end of the video you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and joining me on another doll customizing video. I really hope you liked it and enjoyed seeing the process of me making this pastel warrior doll. Let me know what you guys thought of this doll in the comments section below. If you want to join me on future customizing videos, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you like this video. My next doll will be my entry for the Dollightful Tropical Collaboration, so if you want to see what I create for that video, make sure to hit that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.